Thanks for coming out. I'm glad we have a, a really full room. Uh, the company I'm going to talk about is called Rifco. We have a very simple business and I'm going to talk about three reasons why you should consider investing in Rifco. First thing I'm going to talk about where our company is today. I'm going to explain a little bit about what business we're in. We're an auto lender. If you've ever gone into a car dealership and got a lease or a loan, you understand what business we're in. And it's as simple as that. The automobile industry had a little bit of a challenge this last couple of years. Um, what that has done, it's created pent up demand. Sales today are below replacement value. So what that means is there's not enough cars being sold today to make up for the cars that are wearing out. Uh, projections are that that pent up demand is going to translate into exceptionally high sales. So how we compete with very, very large competitors is we specialize as being the high service provider in the industry. So as I mentioned, we deal with the car dealerships. So those dealerships, day in and day out, sell cars, fix cars, but they also arrange financing for their customers. And we focus on the car dealerships because that's where the car loans are. So we provide exceptional service when they contact our office online and over the telephone in order to arrange financing for their customers. So what we do for our car dealerships is we spend a lot of time seeking out in the industry those dealerships that are like-minded. So we're not the biggest, so what we do is we seek out people that see things the same way we do. We're looking for uh, shared values and that process is long, it's laborious and it means we actually have a waiting list of car dealerships in every region looking to come on board with our company. And as I mentioned, it's car financing. It's not incredibly complex. I'm sure most of the people in the room here have had an auto loan. Our borrowers, uh, they're average people. Uh, they need their cars to get to work, drive their kids to soccer practice, typical families in Canada. We lend what we say is the average individual. Now we specialize in the niche in Canada, those individuals that have had a credit issue in the past seven years. So uh, you probably are aware that everybody in this room has a score associated with them. Some people call it a Beacon score or a FICO score, an Empirica score. This uh, segment that is on the screen right now is what uh, the banks would call prime lenders. So if your score ranges from say 700 and up, some people would say you're a prime uh, credit quality. We focus on the blue bars there, which is about 33% of Canadians. You'll see there's some overlap into what the banks would call prime. That's who we target. Uh, it's about um, it's about a third of the people that probably live in Vancouver, a third of the people that live in BC. Now this uh, target market, you see it's sort of the middle of the spectrum. Uh, we experienced at the end of the year about 1.8% of our customers were behind in their payments to us. It's not a lot. In fact, it's exceptionally low for us. Um, I for forgot to mention up to this point, uh, that target market for us they pay on average 20% interest rate on their car loans. Who would pay 20% interest rate on their car loans? 33% of Canadians. You can see that means 98% of our customers were up to date paying their bills on time. So if we're going to lend money, we're going to be in the finance business and we're not a bank, our funding is critical. Um, Right now we're lending somewhere between about a million and two million dollars a week. So we have four funding sources. Uh, we're in pretty good shape, lots of capacity. Uh, our funders include the Bank of Montreal, a company called SecureCore, a credit union in Alberta and another small bank in Alberta. And uh, we have a lot of unused capacity. So what does this mean? I think we talked a little bit about what business we're in and where we are and who our target market is. So, so what? Where do we go from here? Last year, our last reported year, we wrote about $44 million in car loans. Uh, our average loan size is about seventeen dollars or $18,000. We focus on like two or three year old cars. 
Uh, that's a lot of car loans uh, to write. But if we put it in perspective, that uh, segment of the marketplace that isn't prime, estimates are that's a $4 billion a year business in Canada alone for car loans. So yes, I'm going to show you that we have a relatively small market share. Now, what I'm trying to explain here is we're not done, the market's not saturated, we have lots of room to grow, and the exciting thing about our business is that we're profitable and we're growing, and we have opportunities to achieve tremendous scale as we grow. So I'll talk a little bit about what our results were last year. Loan originations. This is new loans that we wrote for the year. Uh, we grew 53%. Now, it was off a tough year, and the tough year was a result of the credit crisis and uh, the recession. Uh, just about $44 million. Managed assets, that's how many loans we're administering in our office. We get about 6,000 loans we're looking after right now, uh, almost $74 million. You can see that line's going in the right direction. Then revenue, uh, up again, a record number, a little over $16 million. And write-off rates, so when you lend money, you work really hard to collect most of it back most of the time. Uh, we, you can see that we peaked in our credit losses in 2010, which was a tougher year, at almost 6%. So I'll remind you, we lend at 20%, and during what was a very tough year, we lost about 6% in credit losses, leaving 14. That's a very healthy credit spread. If we compare that to prime auto lending, so probably the loans that many of the people in here might have had, maybe it got a car loan at 6.5%. And that target market might have a loss rate of a half a percent, or a quarter of a percent, or a tenth of a percent. But six and a half for seven minus a very small number is six and a half for seven. 20 minus four, five, or six is 14 or 15 percent. Much better spreads. And we made some money. Net income about $2 million for the year. Our market cap today, to put it in perspective, is about $18 million. We set objectives. Every year, we report to the shareholders what management's goals are for the year. We set those objectives in our annual report, and every quarter, we report how we're doing on those objectives. Here's our objectives for the coming year. Record loan originations of $65 million. We're gonna grow our loans under management, our assets to 95 million. We're gonna have a record revenue year. We're gonna make some money again this year. Uh, to put in perspective, our goal for the last year where we had that $2 million number, was uh, about uh, 1.5 million. So we passed the goal, we've raised the goal, hopefully we'll raise the top line too. And uh, write-off rates are gonna drop this year uh, to 4.2%. So our spread is gonna stay healthy, in fact, it's gonna grow. And then Q1, here's a press release that we issue. I mentioned we report back. Uh, here's how we did. We state our goal and we say whether we're on target for it or not. So, record loan origination, $65 million. First quarter, 15, almost a quarter of the way there. We expect we're gonna grow, we're in good shape. Managed assets, 95 million. We grew from almost from 74 to over 81. Revenue, $4 million. Targets, 17, pretty good shape there. Our loss rate, well, we had a, an anomaly in our loss rate for Q1. It was an anomaly to the good. Loss rate was like half a percent. It was crazy low. Um, sets us up good for the year. And net income, uh, we made $677,000 of profit towards a target of 1.6, so again, we're in pretty good shape for that one too. And I wanna mention, if you've ever invested in a company where you have trouble knowing what's going on, setting those targets and reporting back to our shareholders, who are the owners of the company, of course, is something we've done uh, since we became a public company. And of course, all that records are historic. I'm not saying we hit every target we ever set, but we do tell you how we're doing. So what's the future? Um, we're gonna keep growing, and our target's to get to $100 million a year in new loans. This is in a $4 billion marketplace. Uh, this is not a monster market share. This number's important because at $100 million, we hit the radar of a whole different group of um, people that are interested in, in a financial way, let me put it that way. Receivable growth. Uh, we're targeting 95 this year. Um, 100's really not far away there. And here's our credit model, which I talked about. We got the top line, that's how much interest we make, and then how much we lose. This is strong, predictable credit performance. 
and I'm going to explain why this is really important, is we got a profitable company that's growing in a large uh, niche, four billion dollar niche, and we produ produce predictable credit results. And there's a whole world of financial institutions out there that are working on margins that are this thin, granting mortgages at 2.2%. Um, as we prove scale, we prove our credit model, uh, we become interesting. So what I'm talking about is uh, the value of our platform. Uh, some people call it our secret sauce. This isn't on the balance sheet, but we have a model that's been tested through recession, through credit crisis, that delivers growth, profits, uh, and is scalable. And as we drive that platform value, uh, that drives shareholder value. So why invest in Rifco? In summary, very, very quickly, strong growth profile. We have the ability to grow, we have a niche where we can grow, and we grow in customer service, which means we don't get in a price war with anybody. We have strong profitability. And as any financial institution, the bigger we get, the more economies of scale we enjoy. Uh, I think our profitability levels are uh, only going to grow. And this platform value that I talked about. So by investing in Rifco today, you can invest in a company that delivers this growing profitability for today, which should translate into incremental increases in the share value. But at some point, Somebody's going to come along and say, you know, we have a multi-billion dollar balance sheet and we can't get those kind of credit margins doing what we're doing. We want your secret sauce. So at some point, shareholders are going to receive this hidden gem on the balance sheet, which will be unlocked to the benefit of the shareholders. So that's why I think you should consider investing in Rifco today. Thank you.